How's it going, everyone? Got quite a lot to cover in this video as far as PlayStation updates go. God of War Ragnarok was one of 2022's best game, and are you gonna have to wait five years like you did for Ragnarok? Actually, it was four and a half years, but you get the idea. Are you gonna have to wait an extended period for more God of War? That may not be the case as a God of War expansion, whether it be standalone, whether it be DLC, we don't know, but it looks like you're gonna get more God of War content and that might be revealed in the very near future. Another game that's gonna have a lot of new content, Gran Turismo 7, the free Spec 2 update that's version 1.40 is releasing today. This is a massive update, we'll talk all about that. But first of all, God of War Ragnarok's DLC or expansion may be revealed soon. Now this was initially set by the snitch he said that a god of war ragnarok dlc or standalone project was in the works and around 60 percent complete if it's a standalone project 60 percent is probably a sizable way through the project and we're two months removed from that bear in mind that previous god of war titles did not receive dlc and now one of spain's biggest gaming websites has dropped info as well anonymous sources from inside sony confirmed that not only is it real but it will be announced before the end of the year speculation from the website points towards the game awards which is scheduled for december the 7th as the likeliest venue for the announcement take it as a rumor for now but i would not be surprised at all if this comes to fruition look we've been talking about it for literally years now years and years that the game development cycle of five years to get these games out horizon forbidden west five years if you look at spider-man 2018 to spider-man 2 that was five years however what spider-man did was we had a bridge the gap kind of a game we had spider-man miles morales i really do believe that this is going to be something that you see more of you didn't see it with naughty dog but naughty dog is dropping a lot of remasters and upgraded editions it's essentially projects that they can put out that's not going to need the level of investment that the full-on sequel is going to require so they can still generate revenue and build upon the success of the original title i have no problem with this you want to do more 1.5s as people are calling it as miles morales absolutely on board with that hell i would have liked to see if they expanded horizon forbidden west burning shore dlc a little bit you know, made it a little bit more expansive, and I would have been all for, you know, spending $40 for a standalone release if it was a little bit bigger of a release. You really couldn't do that with Burning Shores just because there wasn't that much content in it, but Burning Shores was still pretty damn good for 20 bucks, and I see that being a regular thing. We, Whether it be DLC, whether it be the Miles Morales strategy, you're gonna see one of the two just so they can continue to monetize these games that have so much investment attached to it. Look at Ghost of Tsushima. How long has it been since Tsushima came out? It was all the way back in 2020. We don't know when that sequel's coming out, but they got Iki Island out, but they got that director's cut out, so they generated and created another revenue stream for that. They're probably going to create another revenue stream out of Ghost of Tsushima once the game drops on PC. If that happens in this millennia, that is what Sony is doing. So they can release their big titles, their big cinematic experiences, but they can monetize it multiple times. First, they release it. Then they do DLC. Then they put it on PlayStation Plus Extra. Then they put it on PC. From a business standpoint, I think it's a strategic way to handle things, and uh, yeah, it would be something that would offer more content for these games, and I think people would ultimately be pretty happy with Look, I grew up in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Those are my fondest memories of gaming, and seeing this development cycle that is attached to these games these days is just wild to me. Waiting four and a half, five, six years between titles, I get it. These projects take a lot of time in the oven to actually get done. But I remember back in 2007, we got Uncharted 1. Back in 2009, we got Uncharted 2. Uncharted 3 in 2011. And if that wasn't enough, less than two years later, Naughty Dog put out Last of Us as well. In a six-year span, you got those four games. And I'm gonna be real with you guys. Are the games these days that much better? Yeah, from the technical standpoint, they look prettier, but... I'll compare Naughty Dog to Naughty Dog's title. Man, I much preferred the 07 to 13 period more than I preferred the last, what, six, seven years of Naughty Dog? Certainly the last six years of Last of Us Part 1 getting a remaster and an upgraded release and Last of Us Part 2, which I vehemently disliked. I know a lot of you guys disliked it, but if this... 1.5 style release or doing more DLCs is going to offer a more consistent pipeline of getting content out to the consumer. I think ultimately it's going to be a net positive and I do see Sony uh, moving in that direction just because I don't know if we can continually go down this 
five years in between games. Like, it's a lot, and it's a lot of investment to put, and a lot of pressure on the development studio as well. And I remember when Ragnarok came to fruition and we had heard that this was going to be the conclusion of the Norse arc, one of the main talking points was Santa Monica was like, yeah, yo, we spent five years on each game. We can't, we can't make this a 15-year trilogy. And even they were saying that, that these game development times are so long that they made the Norse uh, arc two games. And I know that Sean Layden has spoken a lot about it on social media and Twitter that at some point, game development costs, the timeline to create these games, how much investment it requires, we're going to, we're going to get to a tipping point uh, when it comes to that, especially when you look at this year in particular, the amount of layoffs, the amount of jobs being lost with games not performing well, Immortals of Avaeum, I'll constantly go back to that, Forspoken not doing all too well, these big budget titles that just, you know, have an immense amount of investment attached to them, but they don't pan out to a great degree. It's just, I know I'm rambling and I know I've been down this diatribe several times, but it is something to ponder and it is something to consider. We got chapters now, so if you guys are sick of my rambling, you can just continue to the next topic. Speaking of the next topic, Gran Turismo 7 Spec 2 update is going to be launching on November the 2nd today. This was officially announced yesterday. New cinematic introduction. The opening cinematic video has been updated with exciting new visuals. You've got seven new cars being added as well. From muscle cars to the latest EV sports machine, seven new cars will be added. The Spec 2 update introduces seven new cars to the game. These new additions focus on classic American muscle cars to the latest EV EVs that are currently available in the real world marketplace. There will also be rare limited edition manufactured tuned cars and ultra high performance sports vehicles meant for hot lapping your favorite racetrack. These new cars can be purchased from Brand Central or the Legend Car Pavilions. You've got the Dodge Charger, RT426 Hemi, You've got the SRT Demon, Lexus LFA, Mercedes-Benz 190E Evolution 2, the Porsche 911 GT3, and the Tesla Model 3 Performance 23. You have the Lake Louise track, a new original snow track based in Canada called the Lake Louise track joins the fray. The moment you've been waiting for has finally arrived with the addition of the snow track. Nestled at the base of the World Heritage Canadian Rockies, this Gran Turismo original offers a one-of-a-kind snow track experience set within a captivating fantasy ski resort setting. The long track boasts an array of challenges from low speed and high speed corners to an adrenaline pounding long straightway. It's the perfect choice for those seeking to their driving skills on challenging terrain. The short track is for those who prefer a twisty layout with consecutive corners that will put your cornering techniques to the ultimate test. There's even a trioval layout with only three corners as well. You've got a long track, short track, and then the trioval. Three extras menu as well to the cafe will be added. New events, including weekly challenges, adding a variety and depth to the world circuit. New master license, the meeting place update, split screen racing on PlayStation 5. Now up to four players will be able to race in split screen. PlayStation 5 only for that. Slower shutter speeds, a new scapes collection, and new dashboard as well. A significant update for Gran Turismo 7 with Spec 2, and it is officially releasing today. It is a completely free update, so go check that out. GT7 still goes for a hefty price, but one of those games that came out like a year and a half ago and still hasn't been added to PlayStation Plus Extra. Uh, one of the few that's, you know, that old and has still yet to be added. Obviously, God of War Ragnarok has yet to be added, and of course, Spider-Man 2 just came out, and that hasn't been added either but that is gonna do it for me again i know i went long with the god of war ragnarok take but i feel like it's something more and more we gotta mention in gaming that these gaming storylines and these arcs are taking forever to complete now and i get it like game development time is no slight on the developers the ambition and the um the standard for gaming has just been so incredibly high but i think you know the toothpaste is out of the tube at this point, and we can't set the standard back, but I feel like if we do these 1.5 style releases, at least it's a happy medium where the consumer can get more content of the game and the developer can maintain the quality level that does take so long to ultimately reach uh, when it comes to these game development times. But, you know, if it was up to me, I would love for the standard to be lowered, us go back to the late 2000s, 2010 era of getting, you know, Killzone 2, Killzone 3 in a two-year time span, Uncharted Trilogy in a four-year time span, etc., etc. But those days are long gone, so this is a nice, happy medium. Gran Turismo 7 Spec 2 update launches today. It's a free update. Go check that out if you have the game. That'll do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.